This program contains flashing images which may be unsuitable for viewers with photosensitive epilepsy. MGM has certified the following film PG. Parental guidance is advised. Big films, bold characters, Grolsch, sponsors of MGM HD. I think what makes the um, Westerns, particularly the Sergio Leone, Ennio Morricone Westerns unique is, for me, um, that soundtrack that Ennio Morricone provided. Um, the soundtracks of these films, the Spaghetti Westerns in particular, are just incredible compositions and a beautiful blend of um, music and sound effects. <laughs> you think of, of iconic Westerns and the, the, the influence of the music in them, fistful of dollars and uh, a few dollars more. Music uh, played such a massive part that uh, that's what attracted me to it. First of all, there's obviously this marriage between Ennio Morricone and Sergio Leone, you know, creating those big white shots and that big, also broad sound that Morricone brought to the Western. It's at a time in um, hi film history when the Western, the John Ford style Westerns, you know, the, the good guy and the bad guy, that's died out. There's no more money in it in Hollywood. And all of a sudden, this Italian comes out of nowhere and brings on this sort of like pastiche. I think what you're seeing is the birth of democracy sort of concept. That's what Leone went on about, that it's never clean. It's quite dirty and very, very bloody. And I think we try to, to uh, recreate that on stage. We try to think, you know, you don't know who's good up there. You know, everybody's up to something and it's no good. But at the same time, you know, it's that um, anarchy and that ingenuity of using whatever's available to survive on stage, so to speak, with, uh, you know, the hundred or so instruments. And I think that makes this show very unpredictable and very exciting. The Spaghetti Western Orchestra got together uh, back in Melbourne in Australia and it, it began around uh, a card table. We were gambling and listening to, to different sorts of music that, that might suit the, the card game. We used to sit around playing cards and, and pretending that we were sort of, you know, on a boys' night with whiskey and cigars and all of our five cent coins and uh, we used to listen to the Morricone soundtracks for the Spaghetti Westerns. And uh, the music really suited it and so we thought, well, you know, there's some theatrical and, and musical potential there. Uh, and that's when we decided to, to try to put it on stage.
I caught them at Edinburgh uh, Festival, um, and I saw what they were doing uh, as a unit. They were covering the the the, the, the bigger scope of the whole uh, Ennio Morricone works. And um, uh, when I saw it, um, what captured me was, of course, the spaghetti Western themes. And I thought that they had um, a good idea. But um, what they were kind of missing, perhaps, is maybe the Leone side of of the of the of the partnership. And um, I couldn't help but start to imagine uh, all these great scenes and um, um, and acting out uh, a little bit more on stage. <laughs> What are you folks looking at? <laughs> very interesting. I couldn't help but just thinking like Sergio Leone in a way, sort of very cinemascope, very sort of wide shot. And uh, in, in a kind of way, that's what you're getting with this show. It's getting a wide shot of uh, celebrating the great themes of the spaghetti western. So anybody who's a fan out there, or even people who've, who've never seen them before, um, experience something which I think is magnificent. It's that broad and also extreme close-up in the sound of Ennio Morricone. And the, the leone ass side of this show is very much the big, broad colors and those m beautiful shadows that I think was, in a way, the reverse of what Ennio Morricone used to contribute to Leone. Behind that, you just don't have the normal sort of guitar twang um, and uh, sort of a boring score that you usually had in, in those movies. You've got the most beautiful compositions that are twisted by combining what I think is the sound department and orchestral scoring, which is the genius of Ennio Morricone. Well, the Foley ideas really came from the boys themselves. You know, I think uh, they were big fans of, I think it's Frank Foley uh, who um, uh, created this thing about doing sound effect departments, you know, and, uh, but at Morricone it was quite clever to enmesh that um, sound effect department within the orchestrational score. And we wanted to pay a complete tribute to Morricone, not just the classic Western themes. I don't think you can do that, because if you actually listen to a soundtrack from Marconi, there's probably one or two themes, and they're repeated throughout, and then you've got all this obscure stuff. And a lot of that obscure stuff is from his jazz background. You know, he, before he, he, he launched himself as a, a composer for film music, he was um, a dedicated experimental jazz musician and composer. And he wanted to pay tribute to that, I think, in his scores. And, and, and he, you know, he didn't want to segregate that. And I thought that was beautiful. That's what makes him so unique. And so we wanted to, to continue to do that. And um, the recreation of, let's say, for example, the, uh, the gunslinger you know, walking out with the boot crunch. And uh, we use cereal, a cereal brand of certain type, <laughs> to create that crunch with the microphone in the box, creates that beautiful crunch of the cowboy boot.
Um, we've got the rubber gloves that flap next to the microphone that sounds very much like, you know, the bird flap of the chicken coop flying off as, you know, maybe um, Eli Wallach, you know, the, the ugly, uh, uh, walks through the, the, the back of the general store and about to shoot, you know, or try to shoot Clint finally in his frustration. But I think all these things uh, came from wanting to really pay a complete homage, so to speak to the great Ennio Morricone scores. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm cold. Oh, cold. Yeah, it's cold. I'm hungry. I am lonely. And I think you couldn't do a real complete show of Mor Morricone music without doing Foley's. A lot of them come from Graham, the other percussionist. Um, he's actually really, really inventive, so he'd come up with uh, you know, the whole smacking a lettuce thing to, to replicate someone being punched, and he's just got all these great ideas. So it, it got me, th it just gets you thinking about possible, you know, substitutions for various sounds. If you look at our stage in the show, it looks like a pop up book. It opens up, it's like a giant screen that's opened up and then you know it becomes three-dimensional and the characters and the music come out to life and so we couldn't help but add that dialogue and we're very much against using the moving image we become the moving image we are the film we are the soundtrack and we hope that the audience that sits there and watches this um, are triggered or going to a euphoric recall to recreate uh, in their own heads where and when that part of the movie is and sometimes by doing the foley we push that along just a little bit more
<laughs> my favourite Western moment is from The Good, the Bad and the Ugly. And it's when the, they're in the graveyard at the end of the movie and that fantastic theme, the ecstasy of gold's playing and the cameras are spinning around and they're running. That's just a fantastic um, moment. Out of the good, the bad, the ugly, with the villain casting himself through the glass with the meat in his mouth. That's my favourite. Well, Eli Wallach is just absolutely brilliant in all the movies that he appears in, and he's just a fantastic character. The time when he's in the bath in the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and Clint comes in and tells him, Put your drawers on and take your gun off. He says, yeah, I'll go and shoot them. I get dressed, I kill them, be right back. Oh, listen, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, he's not alone. There's five of them. Five? Yeah, five of them. It doesn't matter. I'll kill them all. The, the quintessential cowboy, you can't go past Clint Eastwood. I get to wear his trousers in this show. They're the most expensive pair of pants I've ever bought. Yeah, so there it is. Yeah. This show is incredibly fun, and, and there's a hell of a lot of humor in this show. I think people, you know, when they come to it, they, they, they're, they're not sure what to expect. I think they're sitting there going to go, oh, we're going to get the great themes of Ennio Morricone. But what they're getting, in fact, is a very, very funny show mixed in with a lot of serious stuff. Um, the humor comes from, you know, five guys trying to recreate the sound of a hundred size orchestra. We read um, mock scripts, we do foleys, um, we do all the, the sound effects, and recreating the sound effects can be hilarious because, you know, what you hear may sound very simplistic, like, you know, a guy walking into a saloon and asking for a whiskey. And a, but when you recreate and you see how organically we break down and make that sound, it can look hilarious because we're using cabbage, we're using rubber gloves, we're using dry pasta, we're using, you know, uh, tin cans, uh, we're using uh, whatever is there, you know. And so it looks incredibly funny. Uh, from the audience perspective, but we treat it very seriously. But you know, uh, we can't help that you know that it turns into a bit of a comedy show just by the mere effort of trying to recreate that epic sound with just using five guys. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's nice you laughing.
Bob. Me? You. Him? Yep. Huh? Why? Him? Bob. Why? Cause. You? Who? Huh? Bob. <laughs> One more word in your day. <laughs> Poke me in the eye with a sharp stick. I'd, I'd rather be. I'm weak I'd rather get. Hey, what, what are you? Hey, who's gonna eat this chicken sandwich? You gonna eat that? <laughs> Any, anyway. Ow! Whiskey! Ow! 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 ow, ow. <laughs> hey, I come over here yesterday. Hey, what? You know what? You know what? He's putting.